This is Kelly from Brew Pursuit Junk Journals, and I've just been crafting away uh, for days. <laughs> Working on, I made all of these. I mean, this is a lot. It's only a small portion of all of the bead charms I've made, and there's even more in there. So it's hard, kind of hard to imagine how many there are, but it's a lot. I'm thinking there's maybe like 50 in there or something like that. So that's a lot. Uh, basically, oh, that's interesting. Uh, I did this part of it. So it's like um, I used a jewelry pin and I had some tips that I thought maybe I would just share with you. There's one that ended up having um, the bulb pin attached to it and then uh they're um ready to have a charm attached to the end of it which i started doing uh with a bunch of these so those are the ones where i got a charm attached to the bottom so there's that i'm thinking i'm, I'm gonna try to come up with these like embellishment kits uh for for themed journals so we'll try that uh, these are the paper beads that i made at the last retreat the georgia one and we did those those were pretty fun one thing i discovered about this is two things i should have glued the beads along the way because I noticed that they kind of shift a little if you can notice that and it some of them were worse than others and it kind of caused a little bit of an issue uh I could probably I I went back and I glued one of them it might have been this one so this one wasn't too terrible so uh yeah I'll probably go back and do those because that's what I should have done to begin with. The other thing was, I probably won't use paper beads again for jewelry pins, unless I make the hole smaller. So let's just say I use something really, really narrow. If I had maybe a toothpick in there, but my I, I didn't start out with any kind of a tool. And so it, it the holes are quite large. And that was one of the things I wanted to point out. There's a little baggie around here. So my jewelry kit consists of, we'll, we'll get to that because I ended up, well, this is related to that. So first I have to show these beads flying. All oh, those are the seed beads too. So that's going to be fun. All right. Uh, put, put the lid, put the lid on your seed beads. That's my other tip that I have. Oh my goodness. Okay, so in this little spot I have, I know this is like a fishing tackle. Actually, this one might have been for embroidery floss. I think it was. I can't remember what this was designed for. I originally had embroidery floss in this one, I believe. But at any rate, I have my jewelry pins in here. So jewelry pins, they look like this. They've got a little eye at the top some of them do some of them just have a little um like a, like a stick pin like a like a, like a pin tip like this some of them are like that the uh but these you you put all the beads on do 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 and then you 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 use your pliers to spin the end into basically another a ring a jump ring so that's what those are for and then I have safety pins in here because sometimes I like to attach my uh, my charms to a safety pin I do that on occasion but mostly I use the bulb pin I have a lot of black ones and other colors and uh, so anyway that's my favorite one to use Jewelry pliers. Um, I got these on Timu. They're pretty good. They have a wire cutter built in, so that's why I have these in here. But when I'm spinning the uh, the jewelry pin after I put the beads on at the end to wrap it around these needle nose pliers, I really prefer these really 
long skinny ones. I got these at Harbor Freight. And uh, they, they make a smaller loop and make it a little bit easier to uh, wrap that circle around. Because if you wrap it around multiple times, then you're less likely to have your bead fall off. Yes, that's what I discovered. Uh, so I've got these two in here. The only way I can get these to stay is if I rubber band them in this little box. But other than that, this container works really well. So I ended up taking out a lot of the beads that have these bigger, wider holes. And that's where these came in to be. So like these ones right there, those are huge holes. Uh, and they just are a little bit too loose on the, uh, and I ran into that with these two. So they, what happens is they just kind of move around too much and then they look um, off, like, like not symmetrical like this. It's just a little like wonky, you know? There's some others like that in here where, where they just, they didn't, the only way that those worked out is if I put two uh, round beads on the end of each one. And that's where it worked out. So in this case, that's why these book page ones worked out because of the two um, round beads on each end. So those kind of worked out the best. Um, this one is another one where it just kind of just look a, looks a little wobbly or something. I don't know. Um, most of them I took apart because I didn't like them. <laughs> so just, uh, and I, I probably should just take this one apart too. So I had, I ended up finding another use for the wide one. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I've just organized these in here by groupings. Like, I realized, like, the pearl, anything pearl or I would like faux um, diamond sparkly kind of stuff like jeweled where they look like jewels or something you know like those little sparkly ones those work really well for shabby chic so I've kind of like assigned this as my what is on this bead gross you're gonna have to go out of there um this like uh shabby chic I would say that goes with with that style, sort of Victorian, really like glittery, blingy sort of thing. And then I also ha liked putting together like these uh, glass beads uh, and then the wooden beads I really liked, although a lot of the wooden beads had the bigger holes, which made it a little trickier. So, but other mostly the glass ones. There were a few plastic ones. I have these. I'm I'm hoping to use these. These are just really fun. They're like beads, but they look like marbles. So those are cool. And then these like faux rock ones. They look like stones, but they're really plastic. Um, and then this other kind too. There's like these green ones in here. They're like shaped like a stone, really strangely but they go really well with Lord, like sort of a grungy uh, theme and I found these old bracelets uh, from from I made them I got like a really cool bead set and I just didn't have a very good sense of first of all like these elastic things you know they just look really cheap to me um, and some of the beads that I put together are really cool, and some of them look cheap, and then sometimes they just look bad how they're arranged. So I started taking those apart and using them um, to make the charms, and I just was super pleased. Like, this was one of the bracelets, and uh, love that. I mean, that's a really, really cute little charm. Um... So those were really good. That's the only thing in here. Well, I should say this too. This is a really important component, which are these like flat beads. They look like 
this on the side and then they're real skinny. These came in handy for a, like, like this one where it's like you want it to be a little bit longer, not just the two round ones. So you put in that little spacer. It doesn't take up that much room and adds a little something, something. So those, I added a lot of those. And they were very uh, helpful to have. So the spacers, good idea. I ended up finding some like plastic ones, which I think I'll probably be able to use that. And yeah, so good stuff, good stuff in there. The other item I have in here are jump rings. So I don't want that in there. So yeah, jump rings. I made so many different things. Uh, not just those uh, items, but like that wasn't enough. But then I got kind of got on a kick. And I'll save this one because I think that should be a video idea because I like it. Uh, right. Oh, I'm like pulling out my jingles. So these were the wide beads and I figured out to use just my roll of twine which by the way is probably going to be on clearance because they sell a lot of twine and the Christmas stuff. See, this was like a Christmas one that I got um, on the after Christmas clearance. So at like Walmart or I don't know, wherever, wherever that stuff is sold. Uh, not necessarily, I don't know if it, craft stores or not, but anyway, uh, I made these beads, the wooden beads. I thought that would go really, really well. Uh, with different things and I just made a bunch of them and oh how did I make them a uh, couple of tricks so I learned my lesson after doing it how many times that the best option and I have shown on videos before was to put a little glue on the end which would work too but if you don't have like the fabric glue on hand I use tape on the end and it keeps it from spreading apart and it makes it so much easier but what I did was I pulled out a huge long string of the twine and trimmed it off and then started at the very bottom of my my end so this was the the threading end with the washi tape on the end of it and or you can use scotch tape too but I just happen to have washi tape of course so, uh, and then I tied a loop. So this is essentially like a jump ring at the end of it to attach a charm. Because I have all these little candy cane charms. So then I loaded up the beads, which were all those wider ones. And then I just triple knotted the twine. I probably can add a little, a little, bit of fabric glue or our glitter glue to the top there oh and i made a bunch of little christmas smaller charms too make this was fun this was really fun to do too because making the different combinations and little like pink and turquoise one that was fun anyway so those uh, I might make, I'm probably going to do like a kit or something. Well, I already have a Christmas kit in my, in my Etsy shop. At any rate, this was the, the taped in. I thought I would just leave that on there to show you. That was the last one that I did. And then I just added a jump ring and then that, uh, candy cane at the bottom. So I was going to try to add the, I've got a bunch of those jingle bells, mini jingle bells which I think are so cute down there too uh, I have red and green ones I don't know how I'm gonna do that exactly but that's part of the plan and then a little baker's twine in there so that was a really fun little Christmas project I know I'm like into the Christmas thing I think this is my third YouTube uh junk journaling year and this year was the first year that I dove into Christmas junk journaling. I know. Can you believe that? I hadn't done it at all before. Nope. So at any rate, that was that fun project. 
and the one I'm going to save to do a video, but I'll give you a preview. Uh, it's this, I figured out a really cool way to make this charm, and it looks like your regular, like, charm, but there's a, there's a trick. There's a trick to make it go really fast. Uh, the other thing that I had was, because I spilled this little hanger thing that sits up above my desk, and, uh, that led me to noticing all these charms that I collected that were all, like, I um, Catholic um, icons, the Virgin Mary, uh, and I have this bracelet, which I was going to take the bracelet uh, apart, and I thought, wouldn't that make an awesome dangle uh, charm for a journal? Yeah, some little uh, book jewelry. So I added in all of these little charms on it. So if I'm going to list this in my Etsy shop. So if someone is interested in that, uh, I will have it listed in my Etsy shop. Because it's not like my style, but I just thought it all went together so well. And I love that I could keep all of those charms together. So I thought that was, I thought that was rather nice. So that was just a little quick, quick run through. Oh, my God. Scrap flying, trying to put stuff away while I'm talking. It doesn't work. So yeah, now now this is going to be the kit that I'm going to take along to the next retreat that I'm attending. And if you are interested in attending my, uh, it's coming up really fast. Send me a message to attending my Wisconsin Junk Journal retreat or my Indiana one. And I can give you a little discount for watching uh, my YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, so just uh, send me an email. The email's in the description below. <laughs> and as always, thanks for coming along. And I'll talk to you later.